All right, Richie, you brought this up a little bit earlier, and, and you've mentioned it a couple of times. Florida State put Luke Cromenhawk in on the third series. Um, I, I will say this. In a season where it's been very hard for me to find any positives, I think it was a positive that Mike Norvell recognized that the team got a little spark with Luke and scored the touchdown. And the plan was originally to go back to Brock. Like, Brock should have started. Not should have, but according to the plan, Brock should have started the second half. I thought that was a credit to Norvell for letting Luke have the first several drives um, of the game. I didn't really understand going back to Brock at the end unless it was just like, hey, the game's over. You got your reps. Let's protect you and not get you hurt because we want you. I, and if that's the case, then I guess I'm kind of okay with it. Brock did drive you down and get you the touchdown to make it look a little more respectable. So I, you know, I, I'm not going to say the change didn't work. And if the idea was to kind of protect Luke, keep him out of harm's way, then I didn't at the at that part of the game. I mean, I didn't really care about anything. <laughs> I was just caring about like what kind of ice cream I was going to eat after the game um, to cheer myself back up. Which I had some Oreo. If anybody wonders, because that's the best flavor of ice cream that exists. Um, but a QB battle the rest of the way, like, I, you know, I, I I know what your take is on this, so I'll just say it before you do. I think Luke should start the North Carolina game. I think you got to give him a game to start to see how he performs in that environment, how he performs under that circumstance. I think when you come in and your team's down and you're the spark guy, you're the sixth man, right, basketball term, that's different than starting a game. And knowing that you're the starter all week and knowing that you're the guy that is going to be counted on from the very jump, I think he needs to put that on Luke. And if he doesn't do it this week and does it in Notre Dame, then that's fine, whatever. But I think that needs to happen. I, I still do think, I think he's going to rotate. I, I don't think there's any way around that. I don't like it. But at this point, it's not about winning games. It's just about kind of seeing who has what. So I don't know. I'm a Luke fan. I think Luke, and that's nothing against Brock. I do think that Luke needs to uh, needs to start the North Carolina game. I'm going up for the North Carolina game this week, so still supporting, still spending my money, but I, I'd like to see Luke start the game. Yeah, and I, I would say still give to battles in, still give to boosters. You know, it, this does not get fixed if you guys pull your money. I promise you that much. That, that I'll I'll leave it at that. Just continue to give to the boosters and battles in because that's the only chance we have of getting this fixed. Uh, but when it comes to Luke and Brock. Um, I like Brock. I, I think he has a lot of moxie. I think I think he has a lot of talent, and I think he will be successful at whichever school he ends up at next. I I, I think it's one of the two transfer, which I do truly believe one of the two they have to transfer. Right? That that's just the college football world. College football world we live in. I, I think it's going to be Brock Glenn because I do think Luke Cromanhawk is the future of Florida State football, at least in the short future and i'm with all in on on starting luke at this point because I, I feel like mike right now is trying to keep both happy to keep them from avoiding the portal but yeah you might get through december where neither one transfers but after the spring when you know who the starter is or when you have a good feeling of who the starter is the, the other one is going to transfer and they're going to go to a big school they're going to be just fine but Mike needs to, you know, take it right now and say, hey, listen, hey, Brock, you know, I appreciate what you've done for us, what you did last season at the end of last year, throwing into a horrible spot. But we're going with Luke moving forward. I think you should enter the portal. We would love to keep you here, but you will be a backup. And I don't think Mike is going to do that, unfortunately. But I do think Luke truly is the future, at least for the next two to three years. Hey, I'll get right back to chatting with Richie, but first, I do want to give ourselves some love. We've updated folks in our Patreon about what we're hearing about this QB battle. We've also entered some uh, some injury news and nuggets. We, we obviously let people know about Cam Davis and Darius Washington early in the week last week before the Miami game. We've got some other injury news, some other quarterback tidbits that you can certainly go and find over there. It's simply patreon.com backslash DFNS. Listen, I know that football hasn't been a lot of fun this year, and I know that you're probably not looking to spend more money on FSU football than you already have for the season. But if you appreciate the work we do, if you appreciate the content that we put out, you can go to patreon.com backslash DFNS. 
You can sign up for as little or as much as you want to monthly. It'll get you access to our Discord. It'll get you access to a lot of the insight that we get about the program. I expect a bunch of coaching changes. We'll obviously have news and notes on that, hopefully later this month. But we appreciate you guys that are signed up. Appreciate anybody who considers, again, patreon.com backslash DFNS today. Yeah, I mean, I would lean Luke's way on this. I will say, I you know, my take from the very beginning with this quarterback situation was that with terrible wide receivers that create zero separation and can't catch the ball, a running game that is the worst in the Power Five and one of the worst in all 134 teams, the FBS, and an offensive line that is just absolutely dog crap, um, it, it was always going to be hard for me to even really be able to evaluate these guys. Like how much can you really take away at this point? And if you're, you know, and there is some, right? Like it's not like, oh, it's nothing. Uh, but that's why I was never like, oh man, you got to go to the backups to see what they got for next year. Because like, I, you know, it's like saying I want to tie one arm behind your back, Richie, and see how good of a golf swing you've got for, you know, the next time we go out and play. Like starting, like playing these guys I do think it's good for them to get some experience. I just, I don't think it's as valuable as we once thought because again, everyone around them is so terrible. Right. And I, my thought was like, you're more likely to develop bad mistakes or your, or, or bad habits or bad traits or do things the wrong way, or maybe go out and get hurt. God forbid. So that's why I was okay with DJ just wearing it for as long as he could. Like the season's over, you know, D you know, the, the, if you're as good as, as people think you are, you don't necessarily need bad reps on a bad team to get better. Like Jameis never had any reps before he went out and played that pit game, you know, in game, you know what I'm saying? Like if you're a good going, quarterback, yeah. you, you, you don't necessarily need a whole bunch of reps, uh, against, uh, you know, uh, against teams that are blowing your brains out. You, you don't really need that. In my opinion, like you know, people might disagree with that, but again, that's my take. You know, Jameis never needed reps to be great. And I understand he's an all-time great, whatever. But I think that's kind of an overrated thought. So anyway, I don't mind if they go back and forth, though. Because I will say this. Because you have to be really, really sure. And you are going to lose one of them in the portal. I'd be shocked if you didn't, right? And I'd love if you didn't. I'd love if you could somehow figure out a way to keep both. I, I don't know how that would work next year. Maybe you just, you know, a quarterback's announced before the Alabama game. But... I would love if you could keep both, but because you are going to get rid of one, I do think you want to be a, like really short. I thought Luke from last week to this week, just the way that he moved in the pocket, the way that he, um, you know, was just mobile and he felt the rush against Duke. I didn't feel like he felt the rush at all. And guys were just on top of him in like three Team seconds. Yeah. I thought he did a really good job of that against Miami this week. I thought he did a really good job of moving when pressure was coming, evading pressure, running. I thought Brock actually ran really well too. It wasn't it wasn't just with Luke. Like, I, and I'm sure they worked with him all week. Like, hey, dog, y'all better get going, or you're gonna get blown up by this really good defensive line. And so I thought they both did a really good job with that. But I'm leaning Luke a lot. But again, if he wants to. I don't like the, I, I will say this. I don't like the idea of rotating two series here, a series here, two here. No, like let them get a rhythm. No. But if, if you play this, so, so you play this game against North Carolina. I don't want to say that I don't care about winning at all, but if one guy is playing well, I think you stick with him. If like Luke starts and he, and he, run, and he has like four series and you haven't scored yet. I think you give Brock a shot just to see yeah. what he can do. Yeah, I thought it helped Brock. I thought it helped Brock against Duke to sit out for a couple of series. And then Brock came back in and drove you down. Now you didn't score nearly enough in the fourth quarter to matter. But I, I do think that, that can be helpful. Go sit down for a little bit, take your mind off it, like, and then come back out. So I don't mind the rotating, but it just needs to be a feel thing. It, I don't like the scripted crap. I don't, oh, you get two series, you get one, you get this, you get that. But I'm okay if he, because I do think you need to be really, really sure and I have a tough time seeing you moving the ball against Notre Dame coming up soon anyway. Yeah. I mean, shoot, you can't move the – I don't know how you move the ball in practice. Do they ever get across the 50? Um, but, yeah, like if they want to rotate, I, I don't think that's the worst thing for trying to find out really what you got. Yeah, no, it, and I agree. You know, it, I, I think you should probably start Luke. Um, just give him his chance. And this is a, probably the second most winnable game left on the schedule next to Charleston Southern. I think North Carolina opened as a three-point favorite um, in Tallahassee, which is just embarrassing. Uh, Mac Brown has never beat Florida State, so 
um, you know, spoiler Wednesday, I might actually pick us to win. I don't know yet. I have not made my mind up, but we'll see what happens there. But Mac Brown just cannot beat Florida State. But th- this is the game where you, in my opinion, you try to find out who your quarterback of the future is. Is it Brock Glenn or is it Luke Krumenhawk? Because I truly believe one of them will not be here come August of next year. I just do not see that happening. And you need to figure that out right now, especially if you're Mike Norvell and you plan to be here for the long haul, which I think we all hope he is. And, you know, hope he can get things turned around immediately next season. But right now, like you went from the coldest seat sitting on an ice cold throne to one of the hottest seats in the country. And if <laughs> money was no object, you'd be gone after this year. So you need to figure out your quarterback situation for 2025. Yeah, I, um, I mean, I'll, I, I, you said August, I'd be surprised if, if both of them are here on January 1st would, would kind of be the way that I think about that. So 